chapter 7. God, give me strength. 2 Timothy, first chapter 7, verse says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Philippians 4, chapter and 13, verse says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Romans 8, chapter 37, verse tells us, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. No matter what we come up against in our walk with the Lord, we have to always have faith knowing that the Lord is there and he will never leave us nor forsake us. Even when times start to get hard and situations overtake us, we have to remain confident knowing that nothing can harm us or steal the joy and peace that we have in Christ. This was my understanding after rededicating my life and heart back to Christ. I was free. I was a new creature that knew my creator. God loves me and has a purpose for my life. Now, you have to understand that it was my extreme, both emotionally and physically, and I had completely lost my way. I had to realize the fact that I was emotionally broken. This caused me to submit to the truth I needed the Holy Spirit to enjoy my life and that I had to rely on the Holy Spirit to give me strength to stay connected to the Lord. You see, the enemy heard my cries of uncontrolled repentance and my submission back unto the holiness of God. I felt as if I had lost something and needed to reclaim me. I'm here to tell each of you that God does not give us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So stand on the word of God where it tells us to prepare ourselves by transforming our hearts and minds unto the authority of Christ and live in the blessed assurance that he is the King of kings and Lord of lords of our lives. Once you give all of your pain and struggles to the Lord on the altar of forgiveness, then you can confidently answer this question. Is there anything too hard for God? Jeremiah 32nd chapter and 17th verse tells us, With conviction and confidence, Ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. You see, Jeremiah needed strength to complete the mission that God had instructed him to do in the midst of the exile of the Israelites. This is very similar to what is required of us. We will be persecuted and talked about for our belief in him. We will be talked about for the uniqueness of our calling, just like Jeremiah. But we have to know that there is nothing too hard for God. Also, if he sanctioned you to do as he commands, it is you who must obey and follow the voice of the Lord. Every heartfelt believer has a unique purpose in life to draw those that are lost and hurting to the healing center, which is in Christ, to be healed, delivered, and set free just like Jeremiah and the major and minor prophets in the Old Testament, their strength was reinforced through their obedience, allowing each of them to complete the calling on their lives. Please know that each one of them called on God to give them strength, to protect them, and to reassure them that he was still there. That's why it's important to understand the scripture in Matthew 22nd chapter 14 verse where it says many are called 
but few are chosen. You have to hear and connect with the voice of the Lord in all kingdom tasks in order for your journey to be effective in tearing down strongholds. Today, we can be assured that there are a lot of people who have been called by God to live for him and to serve him in spirit and in truth. They are given unmerited favor, which is grace, to live a life that pleases God and to be a testimony of mercy. There is a measure of strength that each of us as believers must believe the Lord for. Jesus told us in Acts to wait for the promise and that promise is power after the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Then we shall be witnesses of him to the entire world. So, our power and strength resides in our submission and infilling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives each believer the power to war in the supernatural according to the scriptures. Christ has given us supernatural strength to cast out demons in his name. God also made us a little lower than the angels, but we have been disconnected from our holy power by sin, thus robbing us of God's strength to trample over delusions, mysticism, witchcraft, and demonic encouragement. We cannot be effective if we are fearful of the journey. We must embrace everything that God has ordained us to complete or endure with commitment and courage to know that He is with us. We must know that we are chosen to accomplish the work that has been given to us. It doesn't matter if others do not understand the exact nature of your calling or mission. What matters is that you complete the work and mission that was given to you. So, as we look back into history and the history books and Christian literature, many leaders that were called by God to lead or correct the children of Israel were not popular people or men or women of statue. But God was able to see their hearts and know that they were internally able to be obedient and humble enough to allow God to lead them. It is with this principle that we gain strength to complete the calling on our lives. You know, God gives us strength when we encounter natural disappointments that seem too hard to overcome. But Peter told us, Cast all your anxiety on him, for he cares for you. And that's found in 1 Peter, the 5th chapter, the 7th verse. So, don't be afraid of your belief or your faith. Don't you know that you serve a God who has been tested and tried throughout the ages against the pagan gods and mystical beings that were created by men only to reveal that he is the almighty and the creator of all things old and new. Your strength resides in your faith. Faith gives us the ability to believe and receive. Our faith allows us to walk through situations in our lives when we cannot see the outcome. By faith, we know that Christ is ruler of all and that God did not give us the spirit of fear when we can't see the whole picture. Please understand me when I say that our faith is all about Christ. Christ is who drives Christianity. Christ is who empowers the believers. Christ is who redeems. Christ is who saves. Christ is is who heals, delivers, and sets free those that are captive. For me, I understand that the ministry of Jesus Christ is founded in love, repentance, faith, compassion, truth, and obedience. Jesus showed love 
and grace to those that came to him for help and healing. Jesus was able to love those that were considered castaways and forsaken. Luke 17, 11 through 19 tells us how Jesus went into a certain village. He met 10 lepers that were not permitted to come into the village. They were exiled from the community and shunned from society because of their situation. The lepers were still human beings, yet they were labeled and thrown aside to deal with their own problems by themselves. Have you ever felt that your community or concentric circle of friends have often abandoned you when situations or illness came upon you? Do you feel that you have been branded in some sort of way as a leper or a sinful nobody that should be ashamed because of what you are going through or have endured? It's interesting that our circle of friends sometimes forget the good and always remember the bad. But Jesus heard the ten men from afar off lifting their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. The Bible continues to tell us at Luke 17, 14, that he saw them. Meaning, Jesus saw that they pressed their way by faith and they believed so greatly that they were willing to have faith enough to see Jesus no matter the consequences. They believed that Jesus was the mercy seat they needed to heal them. If we just find the word mercy, we find that it means forgiveness and kindness. And also in the Latin, it means price paid wages. The ten lepers were looking for mercy and forgiveness from their situation. They did not ask for the leprosy sickness. It wasn't something they did to deserve the horrible affliction. Yet it became theirs and the people around them made sure they owned it. Today, many of us may be in situations Yet, some of our peers or people will not have mercy on us in our situations or socially forgive us for the wrongs that we may have committed. Then we are branded and treated like lepers because we may have backslid or lost faith and committed a sin. When we are branded by our peers as lepers, there is a stigma among those that know us that we are no longer worthy to be in their company or even to fellowship with them. This can be devastating to the person whom the Bible affirmed that we are sinners saved by grace and that forgiveness is paramount for our spiritual growth. Now is the time to believe that God's grace is sufficient. Paul taught on many occasions that we are to live a life that reveals love, kindness, joy, peace, and goodness. In Galatians, the sixth chapter, second verse, Paul continues to tell us, bear one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. You know, Paul wanted the Galatian church to understand that we are knitted together in love and grace. Believers should not have a problem coming to the aid of anyone who needs help because of the law of Christ. Also, the law of Christ found in Mark the 12th chapter, 32nd through the 33rd verse, tells us that loving God and our neighbor is the greatest of all commandments. It is even greater than any offering or sacrifice of monetary or natural value that we as individuals can give. Sometimes it is our community of believers who denies mercy or kindness to us as they start to forget that there was none righteous, no, not one. And that's found in Romans, the third chapter, the 10th verse. 
Christ knew all too well about forgiveness and mercy because he is clothed in mercy and righteousness and drenched with forgiveness. He taught that for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. And that's found in Matthew the sixth chapter, fourteenth to the fifteenth verse. Now, although we know that society no longer suffers from leprosy, but the spirit of leprosy, unforgiveness and persecution is still rampant among us today. Jesus was even asked by his disciple Peter, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him as many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you even seven times, but 70 times seven. And that's found in Matthew 18, chapter 21st through the 22nd verse. So the leopards may have asked for forgiveness from the village people and wanted to be welcomed back into their homes. They may have wanted to be treated by the town physician for illnesses as well. Maybe the lepers even wanted to feel compassion and love in spite of their infirmities. But no one showed love and compassion toward them. Instead, they were made to feel ashamed and less than human for their sickness. Sin is sickness that attacks our minds to make us believe that we are supposed to be cast aside or that we are supposed to live in sin. But that's not the case. In the Bible, Isaiah the 43rd chapter 25th through the 26th verse, God told us that I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sin no more. Review the past for me. Let us argue the matter together. State the case for your innocence. During this time, some of the townspeople may have argued that they themselves were living lives that did not cause those afflictions to come upon them, so they were better or more blessed than the lepers. You can make an argument, but can anyone honestly say that they have not broken any of these laws? Do not embarrass others. Do not oppress the weak. Do not speak derogatorily to others. Do not take revenge. Do not bear a grudge. Do not follow the whims of your heart or what your eyes see. Do not re inquire of spirits. Do not consult magicians or seers. Do not be superstitious. Do not engage in astrology. Do not go into a trance to foresee events. Do not tattoo the skin. Men must not wear women's clothing. Women must not wear men's clothing. Do not walk outside the city boundaries on the Sabbath. Do not wear clothes woven of wool and linen. These are only 16 of the 613 laws and or commandments that were written in the Old Testament scriptures that the children of Israel were required to live by. Thank God that by grace through faith we found redemption and became a living miracles of grace and salvation by understanding that it will take more than the laws to convert our thoughts. Each of the laws was written to prepare the hearts and minds for the salvation of the Messiah that was promised in Isaiah the 7th chapter, the 14th verse, and in Isaiah the 61st chapter, first and the second verse. This message is still important today. 
Romans the third chapter, 23rd verse tells us, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It is good to know that we can still live as close to holiness by the laws and commandments as humanly possible. But it's only by being transformed and renewed in our minds and hearts to live justified by faith that helps us to understand that everyone needs help and mercy at some time and point in their lives. So, it's apparent that God and His Son, Jesus, do extend mercy. The same mercy that the lepers lifted up their voices to Jesus for. You know, we have to be willing to raise our expectations for forgiveness and mercy if we want to be truly delivered from something. We have to ask, seek, and knock with humility for God's mercy, just as the lepers of the Bible. Rescue and salvation comes when we raise our expectations and voices for it. This is still very apropos to our walk with Christ today. Christ wants to heal our hearts and bodies from the natural pains and the hurt that we have encircled into. It's not hard to find Christ in our struggle. All we have to do is call on him in our situation and in our pain. We have to cry out to the Lord. Lord, save me. You know, Paul says it best that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's found in Romans 10, chapter 13, verse. This concludes all aspects of salvation or redemption and fulfills the prophetic discourse of Joel where it says, And it will come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance. As the Lord has said among the remnants whom the Lord calls. Are you the remnants that the Lord is calling to stand tall and strong? Have you cried out to the Lord to give you strength? Are you seeking the Holy Spirit's guidance of love and compassion to help someone who has lost their spiritual way? Have you prayed to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for strength to be the messenger of the good news of Jesus Christ to the lepers in your community to help those who are still drenched in sin, depravity, supernatural bondage, and physical abuse. If not, let us ask the Holy Spirit to give us the anointed words to remove the shackles and to bind and remove the curse that plagues our generations. It takes the Holy Spirit to restore order and mercy by tearing down the strongholds that weaken our faith to believe that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. If Christ healed and delivered the ten leopards after they lifted their voices, and if Christ is telling us to love and forgive others, Shouldn't we listen and allow the Holy Spirit that rests, rules, and abides within us to share love and faith with everyone? We must plant the seed of deliverance and faith so that salvation can draw near to those that want it. Also, if they are thirsting after righteousness, we must bring them to the water of replenishment so that their souls can be revived through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when this is completed, we have to let go and let God give the increase of mercy, grace, and love so that those who are looking and seeking help can experience that they have been restored. Healing happens to many people, 
in most people in the physical sense of surviving a physical disease or illness. Healing can also be considered a supernatural manifestation of what we call grace. Wholeness means a deeper commitment to God, a more constant awareness of the indwelling Christ. So every time you feel a special moment of grace, which is healing in your life, look to Jesus and thank him for the healing. Then by faith, through grace, keep moving a little closer and grow in your devotion to him. Start removing the things of this world that holds you in physical and spiritual bondage so that you can hear Jesus say, you are made whole.